Welcome back to our next session. Uh, talking pens, interactive carpets, and holograms. I think the, the the title alone is kind of reminiscent of kind of um, what is it, uh, bed knobs and broomsticks and all sorts of things. But very excited for this. Um, so another returning speaker, which is so nice to have at this event over the years. It's always that judge of it's great to always have new speakers joining, um, but it's kind of worrying if no one ever wants to come back, right? Um, <laughs> be happy when people. Uh, look, you've already heard enough from me, so I'm going to get out of the way. The stage is yours, and thank you so much for sharing with us today. Thank you, Tom, for the invitation. I'm so happy to be able to return here uh, this year. So, talking pens, interactive carpets, and holograms. Uh, how can we design learning experiences for these devices? Um, my name is Kate. I've been working in e-learning and education for almost 15 years now. Uh, I spent a lot of my career working on developing new formats for learning that included co-offering mobile studies at Wisła University in Poland, or, for example, developing special post-furlough e-learning programs for Gruppen. Now, I don't really like talking about myself, so if you're interested in my profile, please go to the LinkedIn. This is the code. And let me already start talking about what you are all here to listen about. Now, as you might have noticed, we are living in a very interesting time right now. There are so many things happening. Um, the latest, uh, not really trend, but something to discuss for the past year and a half is AI, especially generative AI, and how we can use it in um, education. Now, this is a very important topic, of course, but I thought we can take a tiny breath and concentrate on other matters as well, because AI is on the side of the software. And there are also some very things happening. There were some interesting ha things happening with the hardware, with the devices, before the world got hung up on AI only. So what are these devices? If you're working in e-learning, the most basic devices for you are probably laptops or other types of computers, tablets, and smartphones. These are the most standard devices that basically every platform can um, design for. But these are not the only devices that you can use for learning and e-learning. Uh, I was working for two years uh, helping develop a headless LMS system. And the headless LMS system is kind of a centralized LMS that allows you to place your different types of materials that can then be accessed through totally different devices. And those different devices included AR or VR goggles, um, e-learning kiosks, smart TVs, PlayStations, and so on and so forth. But these are not all the devices that we can use for teaching and learning. We can also use things like um, interactive carpets, talking pens, and holograms. Especially holograms, so the last device, is very interesting. It's a novelty, and there are only just a few educational programs developed for holograms. But I am um, suspecting there will be many more to come soon. What are these devices? Maybe let's start with something called interactive mat, interactive floor, uh, interactive wall. It can also be a smart mat, smart floor, or magic mat and magic floor. Now that I think about it, I think magic carpet is actually a trademark, so you are not supposed to be using it. But mix any uh, mix any words like interactive, smart, and magic with carpet, mat, and floor, and you'll get the result that you're looking for. Now. These interactive mats, interactive floors are actually devices that we have to place somewhere higher around the ceiling. And these are devices that um, display different types of images, symbols, uh, letters, and they're equipped with different types of sensors that react to your touch or to your movement. Uh, these devices uh, cannot act on their own. They require software or an educational program, an educational game that you can interact with through this device. And as much as you can associate um, interactive carpets, uh, interactive floors with children's education, they can be also used in certain areas of adult education as well. 
Well, as you can pr probably uh, see, they are mostly about movement. So first area coming to our mind when seeing interactive mat is uh, ex physical exercises, um, balance, movement coordination exercises. They can be used in rehabilitation, uh, but also sometimes in cognitive skill development, uh, especially for adults. They could be used for relaxation and mindfulness and in whatever area you decide to use them, they are fun. Another type of a device that I would like to, you to pay attention to are pens. Uh, again, they have different names. They can be called interactive pens, talking pens, or simply smart pens. Whatever the, whatever the name, we are usually thinking about a very thick pen usually accompanied by some sort of, by some form of printed materials, maybe books. And these pens are equipped with uh, special sensors. They react to different places that you touch in a book with feedback, usually audio feedback. And they are uh, quite well known across um, different types of uh, publishers preparing early literacy materials. They are very well known. They are very popular in uh, foreign language education. And these programs are also devoted for adults and include often smart pens. And they're also great when we're talking about um, special educational needs. And last but not least, holograms. Now, I don't know about you, but when I hear a hologram, I'm already thinking about R2D2 displaying from the top of its head a hologram with Leia asking for help. Well, technologically, we are not there yet, although we are close, but we can already enjoy some, some form of holograms. The holograms that are already getting um, their popularity are holograms closed in boxes. These boxes can be big, small, flat or very broad, depending on what you want. They offer very vivid colors and because they are very bright, they look amazingly in any dark space that you can think of. It can be a cellar, it can be a planetarium, or for example, a medieval castle. And when you think about car interactive carpet or smart pen, um, they are rather designed with a thought of one or maybe two learners because of the uh, abridged space. Now, holograms, especially those space in bigger boxes, are really great for bigger audiences. And also, because they are holograms, we can use them to show way more complex ideas. So we can actually use holograms in mm, teaching uh, geography, history, um, art and design, I know there's a program in Poland using holograms in medical training, and also it's great for technical training. If you think about it, holograms give us a 3D picture that, depending on the technology, we can slightly manipulate. So you can, for example, imagine a huge atom that you can look around from different angles, or, for example, some type of uh, mechanical part. Now, all these devices are very different. And as I mentioned, there are even other types of electronic devices allowing us to offer learning experiences. So the question arises, how do we design, how can we design learning experiences for such different tools? Or in other words, how can we create new learning formats designed for these new devices? Now, there may be many different answer to this question, uh, this question, mine would be going back to the basics. And for me, basics in the case of teaching is simply going back to learning and teaching theory. Now, um, this is a very, very simplified tree showing us how we move in our daily work from theory to um, practical activities that to, for example, a pop-up window or film box. Well, we've got all these huge theories and theories are very broad concepts that try to explain how the world or one element of the world works. 
these are theories. This can be behaviorism, cognitivism, uh, social learning theory, and so on and so forth. We have smaller, smaller theories. They are they don't have such big ambitions as to explain everything that's happening. So they are smaller. And although they may have the word theory in their name, they are actually methods or strategies. Now, further, theories and methods will develop certain techniques that allow to implement them. And these techniques can be further taken apart into activities. And if I wanted to create a more detailed tree, after activities, we would have things like exercises, tools, and actions. So actions or activities, let's say, are the pop-ups. The techniques are something like, for example, for behaviorism, repetition, and method of, or theory that will be, for example, uh, for theory, behaviorism, for method, uh, multimedia learning theory, which is, again, called theory, but it's actually only a method because it's only looking at a very small part of how things are working. Now, we know all different types of learning and teaching theories. And as far as all these basic uh, theories are concerned, those that were the primary ones that we always come back to, like behaviorism, cognitivism, um, they all have a kind of naturally developed techniques and activities that go with them. So usually when we mm, resort to, repet when we use repetition, we're usually thinking about behaviorism, Visuals are very strongly connected with cognitivism because visuals are supposed to help learners understand what they are learning about. And for example, social learning is basically a synonym for uh, motor reproduction or basically mimicking someone else's behavior. Now, when we work, when we create courses, we usually move on the level of not even motor reproduction, right? But uh, single actions like visuals, like adding pictures, uh, designing pop-up windows, designing fill-in windows. Uh, to design, to create new formats, we need to take a step back and move to theory. Now, before we talk about theories, there is one more thing you need to know about. Uh, we have different types of theories, but um, different theories will be applied in different contexts, well, differently. Uh, to, put, to put it in other words, every context requires very specific methods, techniques taken from different theories. And this special context-based ba um, selection of uh, techniques of activities is what we call methodology. We can talk, for example, about foreign language teaching methodology. We can be even more specific because there is a slightly different methodology or a set of techniques for teaching English. And there will be totally different rules for, for example, teaching Japanese because there's different set of rules for Japanese. will make sure that you um, understand how to write the letters that you probably already know when you're learning English. E-learning, for example, e-learning understood as um, this slide-based interactive courses is also a certain methodology because it does take from different types of theories. Um, it takes different activities, exercises, techniques, and mixes them up so that you get a ready set of things that you can apply in your everyday work. Now, to create a new format, we basically want to create new methodology. Okay, this is what I already mentioned, right? Foreign language teaching, uh, slide-based e-learning. These are examples of methodologies. And to start building your own methodology, you need to build, you need to lay foundation. So basically, what you have to do is concentrate on theory. You have to analyze who is your target group? You have to think about what you want your target group users, your learners to achieve. And then you need to think primarily about theories that you will want to use. Because if you if you want to um, a certain, certain type of behaviors, maybe you will go with social learning and mimicking. 
maybe if you want to teach someone a multiplication that will be automatic you will rather go to behaviorism and all the techniques involved in it however maybe instead of simply learning about helping learn by heart multiplication table you will actually want learners to understand how multiplication works so that it can quickly do even more advanced multiplications other than those that they learn by heart and here comes for example cognitivism now once you decide where you want to go and what learning teaching theories possibly can help you develop the new format you have to start doing what well what you basically always do which is connecting with other um, interested parties or stakeholders because we instructional designers and experienced designers never really operate in a vacuum there are so many people that we always have to talk to and in the case of developing new formats for learning for example for the pens for the carpets for the holograms we have to well first of all uh get in touch with subject matter experts they are the ones giving content they are the ones with whom we'll be further working and moving from a theory or method to techniques they might give us some inspiration or even practical hints what is really great what works when teaching a particular subject area this stage after laying the foundations is also a good time to have a look at the new device that you're going to use you can either contact the producer or another person that already has some experience with the device or you can simply take the manual the technical description and see what the device is offering you what types of interactions what are the limits what are the um, possibilities you can use it and also if we're talking about uh, projects for talking pants for example or for carpets um we are usually talking about bigger projects so there may be a project manager or even for example a product manager who will be working not only on the product but also on the business side of the project and will have some suggestions for you um, if we're talking about interactive carpets or uh, 3d models for holograms um there will probably be a graphic at least one graphic designer involved there will also be probably a developer so as you already know from experience there are so many people that you can interact with so many stakeholders that will have their expectations and after you have this basic uh, direction generated uh, through or with help of learning theories this is the time to start managing the stakeholders expectations now we know uh, what directions we want to go we know uh, what are certain demands towards the final product we know for example about the budget how many exercises we can or cannot use depending on um, for example project manager so now comes the time to add another floor and by adding another floor i actually mean uh, going a step further and slowly um immersing ourselves into details because earlier we were talking about theories and perhaps strategies or methods we might have also started thinking about techniques now this adding another flow is exactly the moment where we are entering techniques and also activities so uh, techniques activities uh, tools actions these are all the things that are that creates the experience these are the exercises that our learners interact with and now that we for example know how much budget we have how much disk space we have in an app and so on and so forth now we can start planning whether we are going to do 10 or 20 or 50 types of different types of uh, repetition exercises uh, how many uh, mimicry uh, exercises uh, or actions are we planning to use and so on and so forth so laying additional floor is the moment when we move through techniques to activities tools and actions now 
when creating new formats for learning, we're getting in touch with totally new devices and creating very innovative learning experiences. There are many things that can go wrong, but I would say that all the mistakes that you might make may come from the fact that you're concentrating on details, on exercises, on actions only, and losing sight from the broader picture. So my advice is that when you are planning, when you are creating something new, a totally new experience, it's always good to take one or even two steps back and look at what you're creating from a broader perspective. I mean, it is easy. I do it myself. I do tend to drown myself in content, concentrating on making 50, 60, 70 questions for a quiz. But taking a step back may allow me, for example, to find a totally different technique other than quizzing that will be equally or maybe even more beneficial to a learner, but also, for example, meeting requirements of different stakeholders. Now, also, whenever you are, when, whenever you feel lost, when you are not sure how to design a certain page for a book on which an interactive pen is used, when you won't be sure how to design um, an app for an interactive flow, or you will have certain doubts about a hologram, do remember that you already have a compass. And those are all the learning and teaching theories. I know that as instructional designers, as learning experience designers, especially working for business or for corporate sector, we are used to the fact that we have to concentrate and make perfect every single course. However, creating new formats will require you to step to take a step back, forget perhaps about a single training, slide-based training, and start thinking more holistically about the full learning process. Okay, uh, this is all from me, uh, some general rules for creating new formats for devices that we, that we already mentioned, but also for other ones um, as well. You can find me on LinkedIn and I do hope you have some questions for me. Okay, uh, if there are any questions, now is the time to drop them into the chat. Uh, I think there's a there's a lot of information in there, a lot of value. Um, so show your appreciation with the like button as well. Uh, and of course, if there are are questions, now's the time. We are seeing a little bit of a delay between live and the uh, and the chat today, so uh, we'll just give it a moment. Mm -hmm. I guess maybe one one question I've got. Um, oh, here we go. Uh, oh, no questions, but thank you for the amazing <laughs> session. That's uh, and this is so often the way, right? I think it's a good idea to maybe connect on LinkedIn because certainly for me, quite often I attend sessions like this, and it's an hour later that I suddenly go, "Oh, hang on a minute, I have a question about," and I, you know, you want that little bit of processing time, right? Um, what I was going to ask about was. I think there's a there's a lot of stretch right now on sort of corporate L&D departments around um, budget and resource and where we spend our time. Um, so I think it's very easy to either totally commit to new technologies and maybe go a bit over the overboard before you really know what you're doing. But there's also the inverse for saying, well, we can't afford it. So there's no point in knowing anything about it. Um, so if I'm in that kind of difficult position, how do I get started and how do I kind of pitch to my business the importance of kind of keeping an eye on these technologies? Because, yes, maybe we can't install a hologram tomorrow. Maybe that's slightly out of my team's budget right now. But that probably doesn't mean just ignore the technology entirely. Right. All right. Uh, this is a very good question. And honestly, I'm not sure how to answer it because um, right now, if anyone will have some free budget uh, for LND, they will probably uh, throwing it into AI. And also, virtually so, because there are already, for example, content management systems that already have this very cool AI plugin that can um, answer immediately questions using information from the content place on the platform. So basically this is already this perfect tutor and you don't really need any trainers here. 
the only one the, the only person that you need is basically some kind of um uh, administrator who will be making sure that all the data that this AI is using is um on top of things um sorry that, that is uh, actually up up to date um However, I do think that really looking around for different types of devices might be very beneficial because, um, well, for example, because of different target audiences. I know that this conference is mostly directed um, for L&D departments, but we all, but we all need a break from computers. We all need a break from screen time. Interactive pens are a way to do that. Also, the carpets. They are not so intense on our eyes. They also help us relax and they are a fun way to integrate. And for example, integration is also another part that is very important for um, basically any team within the company. So also, um, I know that we are now in many countries, especially in Poland, we are moving from the remote model of work. We're going back to the, to the on-site one or to hybrid. So um, we do need some integration events. We do need working around. So for example, uh, using in our learning um, and development uh, programs, um, some fun activities or ed also educational activities uh, using QR codes requiring us to move around, do exercises on different types of devices, like for example, um, the interactive carpet might also be an interesting idea. Um, the devices that I mentioned, uh, the, the two first ones, the carpets and talking pens, are primarily used for children education. Talking pens do appear in foreign language teaching. But still, um, I think that even the device that we already know a bit, like um, the mentioned here, AR or VR uh, goggles, are also a very, way, a very interesting way to go and also you can use the model that I showed you here to design learning experiences for them. The tricky part, for example, with a VR is that is a completely different world and we cannot expect ourselves, instructional designers, to know about everything. So full potential of the device, building words, creating stories or uh, being playwriters and also creating educational experiences. When we deal with something as complex as VR, we have to remember that our primary job is uh, making sure of uh, the high quality of the educational content. And it doesn't really matter if we, we don't have to concentrate on being in a VR world and deciding whether our character should or our learner should, should jump around or just do a beat saber on, I don't know, matching verbs with nouns. This is not our job. It's great. I mean, it would be best if there was another person specializing in VR, VR games who would do that. We should rather concentrate on what verbs to choose and the nouns that we are supposed to, you know, tackle with the, the lightsabers. We are the ones making sure that um, there is enough repetition, um, that there is enough well, quality in education. We cannot. Um, I mean, we cannot be burdened as learning experience designers with preparing every single aspect of training in your format. Absolutely. No, I think that's, that's a really, really powerful and important point because we so often try and do everything ourselves. Um, you know, there's a, every year there seems to be another kind of, here's a new skill that instructional designers need to learn, I think. You know, it, sometimes it's important to acknowledge that, hey, we can't actually be everything to all people at all moments. Um, fantastic. Well, look, thank you so much for running this session. Thank you, everyone, for getting involved in chat. Um, our next session starts exactly on four o'clock, so just around 15 minutes time. Uh, and it's training initiatives to support working parents. So a little bit of a, a little bit of a pivot topic wise. Um, but I look forward to seeing you all then. And thank you once again for this session. It's been fantastic. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. iSpring is an e-learning software provider dedicated to streamlining e-learning worldwide. With a team of top industry specialists, they create tools that make e-learning both efficient and enjoyable. Their AI-powered course creation tool, iSpring Suite, and the iSpring Learn LMS are the top choices for thousands of instructional designers, L&D pros, and content developers. 
Crafted with the user workflow in mind, iSpring ensures a seamless experience for the creation of impactful learning content. Their website, iSpringSolutions.com, offers a treasure trove of e-learning resources perfect for those seeking to boost their L&D career or elevate their organization's e-learning practices. You can check out the iSpring Solutions website using the link in the description below.